Welcome to another edition of Staying Major. This is the 95th episode, and we are doing a special pod today coming from Mactan Island, Lapu Lapu City in Cebu. We're taking Staying Major on the road. So it is good to be back. Like I told you, we are going to try to step up the podcast. This is my second one of 2019, and today I have a guest. And I'm very excited to have him here. He is a 2010, he made the 2010 PBA All-Rookie Team. He was a 2012 PBA All-Star, seven-year PBA veteran, PBA champion. This is currently his third year in the ABL. Last year, he was an ABL champion, 10-year professional basketball player, the current captain of the 4-0 defending ABL champion, San Miguel a la Pilipinas, the fireball. Josh Urbistondo joins our show today. Welcome to Stan Major, Josh. Hey, thanks, Eric, for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to be here on Stan Major. Finally. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have you. I, I would love to have you. I figured <clears throat> we're going to be doing so much traveling this year that uh, I kind of want to get some of the guys on the team. But uh, eventually, I know you live, we live in a similar area, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love to have you at the podcast studio to get the get the full effect. Oh yeah, you know, get the to get the headphones oh, for on. Sure, for and all sure. that. I mean, oh. this is the best we could do when we're traveling. So <laughs> yeah, much. yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time uh, to do this today. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um. So, how are you finding this year going so far with the with the we tr- we just starting like the thick of our schedule where where we've had four games. How are you feeling about the season? Feel good so far. I mean, um, you know, we got a lot of new additions from last year. Um, you know, we, we lost some, some veteran guys, but then we also got a lot of, uh, versatile, um, a lot of athleticism and some young guys that are, that are, uh, very good on the court, but most importantly, you know, good character guys off the court. So, um, um, it's, it's been challenging, you know, in the beginning, it's hard to gauge on where you can be as a team as a whole, you know, but, um, the, the main f- focus, and 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 uh, that Jimmy has been brought brought to us is just to continue to grow, um, to continue to go together, and and nothing is going to be perfect now. But as long as you know um, we're there at the end, and we put ourselves in the position to be at their end, that's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, you know it's really nice to be four and zero. I think we can get a lot better. Yeah, but uh, it's a long season, and I'm interested to see um, how things will shake out as the year goes on oh, yeah, once yeah, we yeah. hit a little bit of adversity we haven't really had that yet yeah so, for sure uh seeing how we react to that but uh we can talk about that a little later but first i want to uh kind of introduce you to 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 our listeners okay. and maybe people that maybe have just started watching basketball the last four or five years don't know where you're from know about your upbringing so where are you from josh well i'm from uh born in san francisco uh, raised in the Peninsula area, about 30 minutes south of San Francisco, Bay Area. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I just, I've been playing basketball my whole life. I've actually been playing a lot of sports. You know, being raised in the States, you, you're introduced to a lot of different sports at a young age. Um, my dad, you know, kind of um, um, forced me or, like, uh, guided me towards basketball more because uh, that was his love and passion. And, and yeah, and uh, I'm here. I've been here for about in the Philippines uh, eleven, almost twelve years now. Okay, yeah. excellent. Now, did you you play college basketball in the states? Yeah, I played college basketball at a NAI Division One school. It's called the GSAC Golden State Golden State Athletic Conference. Um, played there. I was a ju- junior college transfer, so I went to junior college in the Bay Area. Then I got my full ride scholarship to Fresno Pacific University. Um, we were nice. actually in the yeah we were in, uh, with Azusa Pacific Concordia. I uh, saw Mercado. He was in our conference. Viola? Viola, right? yeah. Viola, okay. our current teammate right now with uh, Kaylin Johnson. He, he, he was in our conference. and um, A lot of those schools moved to the Pac West now. Um, okay. A lot of the schools. Um, it was a very, they called, they called it the uh, NAI of the ACC. I don't like. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so they, they, we did that. Um, I did that for two years. And then after that, I got in contact with an agent out here, was interested in me to actually go to La Salle to a college. Okay. Out here. Yeah, and so um, that didn't work out because at that time I was finishing up and I was already committed. 
it was my senior year. Yeah. And I didn't really want to do an extra year and get my master's at LSL. I wanted to actually pursue my dream, which is eventually playing the PBA. So um, that was it. Oh, cool, man. So, like, did you always know that there was Philippine basketball or PB professional basketball here in the Philippines? Yeah, I had an idea. I mean, I knew because, you know, all my relatives and, and everyone back home, they, um, when I was playing, when they, when they saw the big interest that I had and, and, and all the accomplishments I had in, in playing basketball, they were like, you know, you acquire Filipino blood and, you know, would you, would that be your dream? And then that's when I started, not, not really much in high school, but starting again in college. I, I was playing in like, uh, Filipino American basketball okay. leagues and got to get, and got known throughout the uh, Filipinos that kind of, um, um, guided everybody, all the Filipino Americans towards the PBA. Yeah. And so I got, I was in that kind of, uh, situation. And so fortunately I met, I met, I met someone and, and they got me out here and, um, and then, um, but I didn't know, I didn't know too much about it. In the yeah. Beginning. Yeah. Yeah. What was your first impressions when you did get here? What year did you get here? I got here in 2008. Okay. In 2007, 2008. So, okay. And then at that time, it was the D League was called the PBL. Back at that time, yeah, yeah, I played in the PBL. Yeah, yeah, I played uh, three conferences. All right, (laughs) nice, nice. Yeah, so um, that's the older guys. Yeah, yeah, the the, the older people. The new guys were like PBL. I mean, it's the D League. (laughs) When did they start the D League? That was I I, want to say, and maybe two thousand thirteen, maybe okay, thirteen, fourteen, yeah. Been around for you know, about four or five years. Yeah, now. yeah. So it's the same thing, right? It's just yeah. a different name. Yeah, same thing. It's Commercially, just, it's, just, owned. it's just more as a development league, and, and some the the D League teams are affiliated with the PBA teams, so maybe oh, they yeah, that. so filtered yeah, so maybe they can um, pick some guys up directly. What uh, what team did you play for? I played for uh, Farex. Farex. Yeah, Farex. Yeah, um, we were in the finals. We actually we lost to Harbor Center. Um, Harbor Center, they were like they, yeah, they won were a bunch. Of, yeah. yeah, they had like Mark Baroka, uh, all those guys. So uh, who were who were some of your teammates? Did some of your teammates from the PBL make the PBA? My team, uh, yeah, Chris Ross was my teammate. Oh, okay. Yeah, Chris Ross was my teammate. Um, uh, Ronnie Matias, um, he played for Rain or Shine for a bit. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Faundo. Faundo. Uh, Brian Faundo. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we had a, we had a really strong team, but um, but what, but to answer your question, go back to your question about what I, I just thought about Philippine basketball. It was very competitive, and it was just you know it's a it's a basketball nation, yeah. and the, just when you see everyone just so interested in the sport, and and they just believe basketball. Just driving around the street is just—it's—it's it's amazing. It's overwhelming. You know? and so, I mean, the style of play is a bit different, you know, because yeah. you know in the states, I'm—I I'm, was known as you know the quick, the quick guy, the quick guard, the quick yeah. guy. You know, but everyone's quick here, you know, and the physicality is different. So, it really doesn't matter what you, your accomplishments in the states and what you did. You really had to start from square one and kind of prove yourself here, which which I I had yeah. to do. I agree with that a hundred percent. I was just talking to uh, this is a little off topic, but I was just talking to uh, somebody the other day about about Ethan, our, our, yeah. our rookie guard here, has has had a phenomenal college career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. Was really good and and yeah, in, in yeah. And, yeah, and a league that I know is is very competitive. And then um, you know here, I think he's done a really good job for us uh, defensively, not turning the ball over. But he hasn't really had a big scoring game yet. Yeah, like a breakout. And I was thinking to myself, I said, you know what? I bet he is a fast guy, and he is athletic without question. Yeah. For the states, at the level he played at, he was probably fast as fuck. Right? Yeah, yeah, but out yeah. here, um, it doesn't. There's not as big of a gap, yeah. I think, and because the Asian guards are really fast, are fast, They're yeah, like quick. That's their strength. That's yeah, way saying. faster than I would say. You know. If you play at the higher levels in the states, those guys are quick too. But yeah. in Europe, they're a little slower. Here, when I got here, I was like, dude, these guys get up and down, and they're yeah, quick as fuck. Definitely, and it's also it's different for like first guards. I mean, you're a big, you know, yeah. so coming out here, you you apply something to the game here that we don't really have. I mean, we do have. Don't get me wrong, we do have good bigs in the in the PBA and good bigs in the league, but. Um, 
we don't come across them right in the in the Philippines. So you can make an impact instantly and right away. As far as a guard, you know, that does. There's yeah, so there's, many guards. Yeah, there's a lot of know? guards. So it's kind of like you have to do something a lot better or more unique and have a bigger dynamic to your game than than the others to, to to be to be noticed and shown. Yeah, and to flourish in the PBA. I I you know, would so. agree with that a hundred percent. It's just uh, you know every, everybody here plays basketball. Not everyone's like like you said. I mean, not everyone's six six or even yeah. six four. Yeah, so definitely. Uh, it's tough to. It's definitely it's tougher than I would say most people think that that don't really know it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, the yeah, game yeah, as sure. that are as deep as 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 we are. Yeah. Um, getting back to uh, to you and in your career then. After the PBL, I remember you went undrafted. Yeah. Um, what was that whole process like? The lead up to it. I'm sure you were really looking forward to draft day. Had yeah. to be. A, I mean, walk me through that. What was that like? Well, it was. I mean, it was interesting. You know, um, I I was playing like I said before. I just made the finals, and then in the at that time it was only two drafts. Now, I mean, uh, two, two rounds. rounds. Yeah. Right. Right. So okay. excuse me. So. Now it's about you know, three, four, or five rounds. But at that time, and that's right, there's yeah, only two rounds, two rounds, and then two teams skip. So there's only, actually only eighteen guys picked. And um, um, I don't want to like toot my own horn, but <laughs> <laughs> I was one of like the top performers in the combine. You okay. know, at that time we had like a tournament, so we were undefeated. I was, I was even out showing like even Chris Ross, a great friend of mine, was even like, you know. They were thinking I'm going to go top five, or oh, what, just because how I performed in the, in the combine. They mm-hmm. thought that that made a difference, but I guess at that time, a lot of teams had their minds made up, and um, I didn't have an agent at that time, and I was representing myself. And so, you know, as a young guy, you're like, okay, my talent will speak for itself, or my hard work, or somebody's going to notice it. But at the same time, um, it, it's political, and you you do need that voice. You need do need somebody representing you, yeah. and I didn't know that at, at that time, which eventually I, w- I got some help and I, I hooked up with some people, and, and that's when it, that's when I was able to get picked up. But just sit in there. I mean, I have a lot of advice for draftees <laughs> or guys that don't get drafted or guys that you know um, under the radar and or or um, are just like underrated and and overlooked, you know. And that's what that, that that's my story. You know, I could be an inspiration to others because I was just sitting on draft day like, okay, all right. Didn't get my name called and, and it hurt about the same time. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, yeah, because, you know, it's it's something that I wanted to do. I loved it. I put so much work and, and hours and, and into it. So I thought I was going to, something good was going to happen. But, I, you know, I, I have faith in God and I'm like, you know, I talked to after after the draft, um, a Buddy and Granado came straight up to me, uh, Boss Buddy from Santa Lucia and was like, you know what? He goes, um, uh, we didn't have many picks this year. I've seen you. I've seen, I've seen you ever since you came to the Philippines from the States. I've seen you play. I really like you. He goes, uh, uh, come to practice and, uh, we, we could discuss further about, you know, your contract. Cause we're looking in, we're looking for a point guard at that time. Ryan Reyes was a point guard, but they were going to move him to the two. And they're like, all right, just, um, just come by and we'll talk. And so then, um, that's all history after that. Uh, what, like I, I know, I was mad that year because we needed a point guard as well. I forget we needed like JJ was with us, but we needed a, a backup. Like I forget, but we ended up bringing in a point guard. I'm not going to mention his name, a Philam point guard, if I remember correctly, and it didn't really pan out. Okay. It didn't pan out, and then I was back then. I was watching every PBA game, like doubleheader. Monday, or I'm sorry, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm four or five hours in front of the TV watching yeah. all of them. So I'm watching you play, and I'm like, this guy, like, plays great defense, he hustles, he's making shots, like, anyone's undrafted? Like, mm-hmm. we, I think we drafted a guy in the second round. I want to say we drafted or we traded for a guy in the second round, but I was very upset because I was like, man, we could use a guy, a shot maker, yeah. that actually plays really good perimeter defense. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh... We just we didn't have that. We didn't have great shooting, and we didn't have uh, we didn't, certainly didn't have a great defensive backcourt. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. But uh, but yeah, when I saw you playing, I was like, man, who was that guy? He went undrafted. Then why the 
the hell did we get them? Yeah. You know? But, I appreciate uh, that, Eric. I appreciate that. That was, that was, that was good to see. And so, Santa Lucia looked like, Amazing. um, that was a nice, nice start for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at that time, Coach Boyett, um, Fernandez was the head coach. And, you know, it's all about just getting that, that foot in the door and, and yeah. that, that, that one guy that will take that risk and that chance on you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm forever great, uh, thankful and grateful that they did that. Um, but he, boy, Coach Boy was a type that just played whoever worked hard, just, 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 he rewarded him. Whoever was the first one in a practice, the last one out, and, and who was just, um, uh, doing well in practice, he would, he would take that into consideration and play him on the court. So he, he, the, after the first four games, um, I was backing up Ryan, and then Ryan's like, you know, I want to move to the two, and he goes, yeah, Josh has been playing well, and so, then I start. I, I, I started ever since then. Um, oh, and I started, who else yeah. was it? Was Kelly on that team? Yeah, me, Ryan, Kelly, Joseph, Yo, Marlo, Kino, Dennis Espino. Oh, he had the I had, you know, I was blessed. Guys. Yeah, I had some good bets, man. Some bets that taught me a lot. So I had some. I oh, mean, I went. To, I used to have to guard those guys, and those guys used to beat me up all the time, man. Uh, I'm sure you did the same, man. I heard stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was uh, Denok on the team at that time? Yeah, Denok was on the team, uh, but Denok was on was his a, way out. Yeah, San Lucia, that was, a, you, that was a pretty good team, I remember. Um, yeah, we were very good. Um, defensive, I mean, Coach Boyd really preached defense, so we weren't maybe the most talented, the most, you know, um, athletic, but... Uh, we were we played defense, so we always kept ourselves in a position to win a ball game. Were you there when they disbanded? Or yeah, well, I was in the middle of all the that. middle yeah, of all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so weird because uh, because San Lucia was such a since I had been in the country, you know, they were a staple of the PBA, and they were the one thing that I did like about them that it's so different. I, I use them as an example, or say like a shell. Um, from from before as examples of they weren't a San Miguel team they weren't an uh, MVP you know yeah. a power team but they yeah. were an independent but they always put together like good competitive teams yeah they weren't trying to BS around yeah, they yeah, kept yeah. their picks they tried you know they really tried to win and yeah. that's one of the reasons I thought the league was uh, really what it was before because all the teams were trying to win the championship. Um, all the teams were keeping their picks, trying to develop their players. So, yeah, so you were a bit um, shocked. Yeah, so like you know, it would, it would fluctuate. Like some teams would be good for a little while, the other teams would get a shot. It wasn't yeah. just the same team over and over again uh-huh. um, in, in, in the champ in the championship or in the finals or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, um, so what happened? Okay, so you, so San Lucia, so, you're there for one so I was year. There. Yeah, I was there, and then we everybody disbanded. That's when they become became uh, Moralco. Yep. Yeah, that's when they became Moralco. Moralco. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, then I went over to Air Twenty One with uh, Coach Yang was over there, and then I stayed there for one year, and then actually that was my like, really breakout year. And then once I had, I had thirty three, I believe, against uh, San Miguel, and then <laughs> and then at the like that same conference. That's when I ended up going to uh, BMAG. Okay. Yeah, I ended up going to B Make. Uh, Jonas Villanueva was there. He was injured at the time, and then um, uh, Coach George Gallo was over there and as a head coach. And, That's right. He's yeah. a, he was uh, one of my teammates when I first my first maybe three or four years I was in the country. He was my teammate. Really? He was the captain of my PBL team. <laughs> So you you were a teammate of one of my played with him, yeah, one of my coaches. Yes, that's how old I am. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me again. No. I'm not far behind you. Guys. I'm not far behind you. Um, yeah, so I went to B Meg, and then that's when that's when um, um, shortly after Coach Tim came over, and then we we that, that was when I won my first championship. Well, I want I wanted to ask you about the obviously you've been traded. You've been, what is it, six teams? A lot. PBA teams? Yeah, six teams <laughs> in, in seven years or so. Like, Do you remember the the first time you got traded and how you felt? Well, the Was trade, that a hard thing for you to go through? I know for a lot of players it, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, the first trade was um, 
tough, but not as tough because we, you know, we disbanded and everything was kind of chaos. And so, um, a lot, a lot of people got moved, a lot of players yeah. got moved. And so, um, but then when I got traded from air 21, I was like, you know, at, at that time when you get traded, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's a business. You got to be professional about it. But at the same time, you may think that you yeah, have one team may not want you, but on the other mm-hmm. end, another team really wants you yeah, and is yeah. interested in, in having your services. So, you know, you just got to approach the game the same way every time and, and be professional about it. Well, that, that's a great attitude to have. And, and would you say that it took you a while to develop that type of mindset? Or at, I know a lot of players at first, because the bottom line is when, when you get traded, whether you like it or not, the bottom line is the team that you're with – is they're trading you. They're getting rid of you. Yes. And a lot of people, it's really hard for them to get over that first part to yeah. realize the second part, like what you talk about, well, another team w- wants you. Yeah, yeah wants you. Definitely. So did it take, was it a, did you know that right off the bat or did it take a little while for you to understand it? Um, You know, when, being that young at that time, you know, it, it took me a little while to understand it. Um, but then, you know, I'm the type of person that, you know, I, I focus on the task at hand, you know, and, and whatever, um, coach I'm going to be playing for, I'm going to give my all, I'm going to do my 100%. And, you know, it's not really fair to the teammates that, that I'm going to be with if I show that, you know, I'm, I'm not happy there or I'm, I'm disappointed about the trade or anything like that. Yeah. So um, I was lucky to every team that I actually went on. I had vets and I had guys to talk to me and sit down with me. I was blessed to have that because not a, a lot of people do. That's why in the position I am now, I try to share with the young guys on my experiences, and I can see the frustration sometimes young guys have or, yeah. or our teammates have, or, and I try to apply what I learned. Um, and I want to be more of, you know, I, I want to be showing impact that people are going to be talking about. Like, you know, uh, I I enjoy Josh as a teammate. You know, I yeah. enjoy. I don't want, you know, I want like that legacy of like, oh, guys, like he's like a. He's a great teammate. Like he's a great leader. He helped me out. This guy, like, I want people to talk about that five, ten years from now. That's what I'm. Let, that's my vision now. Not, oh, he was a terrible teammate, or he <laughs> he was on his way out, so he kind of was clocked out already. No, like, yeah. I, I'm here. I'm gonna invest. I'm gonna do that. So, um, that's awesome. That's a great attitude to have, and cer- that's certainly something. It took me a while to even uh, understand that when I played. It was like. Uh, it took like okay. Well, you're what? different. You're a, you know you're a megastar. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, a megastar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all over the league. See me. I was I was like I told you I was undrafted. You're, you're just a better person I, than I, I was. Yeah, That's just know. sad. <laughs> That's just sad. I was undrafted. You you come in and you're just the man. Anyway. Um, championship team B Meg. B Meg. You're yeah. a B Meg. Was Tim the coach then? Yeah, Tim Collins okay. was the coach then. Uh, talk. I believe. I know some of the players on that team. Uh, this is James Yap, Ping, James, uh, Ping, Peter J, Peter Jun Simone, Peter Simone. Uh, Mark Baroka, Jonas Villanueva. Jonas Villanueva was a part of that. Um, Joe Devance, Rafi Revis. Um, yeah, we we had a That's a nice team. Yeah, what uh, had, yeah. what was your? Who did he beat in the finals? Was that the Denzel Bulls? That was Coach Jimmy. Denzel Bulls. Yeah, talking sex. Game talk seven. Tex. Game seven. Um, what was your opinion on the foul call at the end? Hey, was it a foul or was it not a foul? You got to, you know, you got to respect the call, you know. <laughs> I was not, being, not being biased or anything, you got to respect the call. Your cross. unbiased opinion was, it's a great call. I remember sitting at home, I was watching that game at home, and... Uh, yeah, they were in command, right? Like they they were winning. You guys, I said, like it was about three three and a half minutes. Up, I said, dude, if they got to make a move, they got to do it now. Yeah, because, yeah, exactly. So you guys came back, and when that call was made, I was a like, me and my friend kind of yeah. like, okay, we got to see the replay yeah. here. What what exactly happened? Because because it, it, you know it's a climactic point of the yeah. series. You yeah, couldn't really sure. hear the whistle on For TV. Sure. I thought it's, it might have been on the rebound. It could, it could have been controversial. You know, James Yad made it. Stellar pass underneath. He had a jump shot underneath to Denzel, and you know. Uh-oh. Well, here's the thing: whether I mean the call, everyone. I focused on the call a lot. I remember I was on Twitter a lot yeah. the next day. But my thing is this: to win a championship, and this is the this is this is the difference. I think is 
to win a championship, there's going to be it's going to be hard. There's going to be some adversity. Oh, so and guess what? First of all, Bulls had to step up and make two free throws with yeah, like no time. Yeah. He still had to do that. Yeah. So he did that. And then TNT had overtime. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do you want to be – I mean, I'm sure they had great coaching and they, they their big guy fouled out. I know all these things happened. But you got five minutes. Like, a champion team has to overcome that to, to win. And you guys ended up uh, playing a great overtime after you made the free throws and won the yeah. title. So, yeah, yes, it sucked for them, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but a championship team, man, it's going to – at some point in time, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. And you got to – Persevere through it. Yeah, so. for sure. So, what was it like playing for Coach Tim? Uh, I never played for Coach Tim. So, okay. Well, I mean, it was great. I mean, I learned a lot under Coach Tim. Um, you know, he um, he really focuses on you know, um, you know the little things. You know that um, some coaches may not f- focus on. Um, he uh, watches a lot of film. Uh, does a lot of teaching. A lot yeah. of teaching. Um, some say he over talks. He likes to hear himself yeah, talk a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> you know, stop practice a lot. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, yeah, we're pro basketball players, but at the same time, maybe some guys aren't, some players may not be as disciplined, may not, uh, you know, uh, know a lot of fundamentals. You know, you, you get, you get, um, you defer from that sometimes when you're as a professional basketball player, when you really have to, you know, have fundamentals first. So he really focuses on the simple, simple yeah. things. And, and I love that. That's yeah, awesome. it could be boring, but at the same time, you know, it wins him so many championships. Oh yeah. So, I mean, that, that team was special. You know, that was my first championship. We, we were very close uh, on and off the court. Um, it started with the vets. Like I said, I mean, Joe, Rafi, James, uh, PJ, but, um, it was it was a great team. So when I did actually get traded from there, that it hurt, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, um, I went there. I you, you always it hurts to focus to think too much about the future or, or you know um, or dwell on anything. You know, life's too short to dwell on anything. So I was really hurt because we won a championship and then I got traded, and so um, it's just natural, right? For yeah. Humans. But then, you're probably thinking, you know, what a great, you know, probably going to win a few more, which I think they did. Yeah, Tim, yeah, yeah, Tim yeah, 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 yeah. quite a few there. Yeah, for sure. But then I went to some, you know, I went to to Mick Panisi and Dan Siegel, <laughs> <laughs> and so they taught me a lot. They're like, you know, it happened. It happened to us. You know. Yeah. So, um, and then, sure enough, I had actually some of my best basketball in my PBA, whole PBA career at Barapapool. So, I mean, one door closes, another one opens. Yeah. You know, so I, th- I believe everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, my wife's supportive over me, my whole career, well, you know, when that happens, hey, there's no reason to dwell on anything. Just hey, just focus on what you have to do to help Barapapool make the playoffs and tr- try to win a championship. Yeah. That's so uh, did, Go ahead. I don't know. So I did that, played very well, and then I went actually – it, it, it's funny how it works. It goes in a circle. Then I went back to it. Then I went to Enebra. Yeah. You know. So. Okay, we'll take a quick break there. I definitely want to ask you about uh, Enebra and some of your teammates and so on and so forth. But we'll take a quick break to talk about a sponsor. One of our sponsors is ExpressHoops.ph. That is a website. If you are looking to book a basketball court in Metro Manila, you don't have to make a phone call anymore. You don't have to drive in traffic. Go to ExpressHoops.ph. They have... Uh, rates, schedules, you can book right there online. So if uh, you're planning to book a basketball court, you can use the coupon code STAINMAJOR and you can win a prize from this podcast. I believe there are t-shirts that you can win and possibly stickers from Stain Major. So expresshoops.ph, check it out if you're looking to book a court with your friends. Back to the podcast. I wanted to ask you, you touched on Hinebra. What was it like playing for Hinebra? Oh, the fan favorite team. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, You're on the home team now. I'm, I'm on the home team. You know, and I, and I'm on the other, other end of it. I'm like, gosh, I, these guys got all the fans, got, you know, everything. So it, it was fun. Um, you know, I watching actually you, at the beginning of my career, watching you and and uh, this was before I was in the PBA. Uh, JJ and Fast and Furious, you know, uh, 
and Ronald Tubid, Rafi. It, it, it was actually like, God, like I get the privilege to play, share the court with these guys. You know, it, it was cool because I looked up to you guys. And, um, you know, just, just like I said, being there and playing, you know, but the only problem is when you're playing with Enebra, you know, you get a target on your back. You know, everyone, yeah. everyone wants to perform and play at the highest level because everyone's at the game. They want to show out. Yeah. You got to show out if you're playing Enebra because you're, you're going to have 20,000 people in the stands. So it was a good experience. You know, uh, boss Al Francis Chua got me out over there and, um, and, you know, um, we just all got the, the thing that he acquired there, you know, he, when he was the coach. Um, you know, he, he really. You were there when he was coach. Yeah, he was one of the coaches. He was head coach. Yeah. yeah. So um, he really focused on a family, building a family and the environment that we just all are, are very close on and off the court. And so, um, you know, with him leading us to that, it was kind of like um, we made the finals. The first, the first conference I was there, we made the finals. We lost to Alaska. Um, I wasn't there. I was in the ABL, actually. I was playing for Sam, the same Miguel Beerman in the ABL oh, okay, that okay. year. All right, uh, yeah. So we made the finals there. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then I was there for about two, almost three years. Two wow, and three years. Yeah, because yeah, I think when I went to Alaska, you were still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which was, yeah, a couple years later. Yeah. But that's what I, I think that's what Coach Al is really good. You know, Coach Al was my very first coach. Here he was my PBL coach, really, and my at, first PBA at coach Tandwai? at Tandwai. Yeah, oh. yeah. So I know him real well, and uh, he's really good. Like for me, not the greatest. Say this isn't this is not a put down at all. This yeah. might come up, but he's not the greatest strategist. I would say or ex. He did have good. Like he could come up with really good plays, like uh, side out of bounds or end out of bounds, end game situations. But the thing I thought he was really good at was like what you said, like um, bringing the team together, camaraderie. having camaraderie. Uh, you're gonna everybody keeping the morale of the team yeah. high, which is why I think he makes a really good boss now because now that's basically his. Besides uh, bringing in talent and whatnot, uh, making sure like the coach is so busy trying to win the game, sometimes they forget about hey, this this stuff's really important. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So. Yeah, he's chem- chemistry for sure. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it was a good run. Uh, we didn't. The, when I was there. Yeah. Who were some of your other coaches that were there? Well, in the. <laughs> were you there for the Frankie Lim era? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that I, lasted one conference. <laughs> well, I was there. I was there for seven conferences, and we had <laughs> five different coaches out of the seven. Conferences. Yeah, I was gonna say. Let me let me see here. Okay. Otto. Otto. Well, it started, okay. it started Al, with that. Coach Al. Al. Otto. Yes. Uh, Ju- Juno. So, so. He was the head coach? Yeah. Juno? Yeah, yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. That's Juno. What did you think of him? Good. Good coach. I mean, um. He, he was a, he was a, I was in a. Cause he came, he came from LaSalle. So, you know, I, mean, yeah. I think it was an adjustment for him as well. I didn't know. I don't remember. Somehow on my mind, I didn't even know he was the head coach. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was the assistant for so long. Yeah. And then he was the head of LaSalle, but then, so he, um, so then, yeah, he became the head and then Frankie, Frankie, Jeff, Jeff, and then Coach Otto came back. Oh, after, I didn't even know he came back. After Coach Jeff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Carriasso, what was your impressions of him as a coach? Very a young coach, his first head coach. First head game. coaching job. To be honest, you know, it, it could have been maybe too overwhelming. I mean, to be, I mean, it's a coaching. tough. Yeah, it's the most high pressure job in the in the league for, for sure. You know, as an ever head coach, and so, um, and also he's coming over. He's gonna he's bringing a triangle over. You know, and nothing against him. I mean, he's ran a triangle. Over, under coach Tim for so long and you know he he knows it like the back of his hand but at the same time it's different to kind of deliver it and coach it because that's coach Tim's expertise yeah you know and so um with him doing that in in such a short time and trying you really need time to develop that system you know yeah. and he didn't have a lot of time to do so you know with when he came in the conference we started kind of right away and then um um you know, different personnel, and so I mean, he he was a good, I mean, great guy. Yeah, um, yeah, great guy, and and knows how to motivate his players, and and um, it's just more so. I, I think um, he uh, the system maybe 
Um, he could have maybe, I know he really wanted to run the triangle, maybe just do another system or something else like that. Yeah. You know, but it's just tough, it's man. Like, uh, just like I've gotten into, I'm, 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 I'm an experienced head uh, assistant coach now of three months, four months. But uh, now that I've, I don't know if I'll ever be a head coach. This might be my only season I ever coach. I don't know where I'm at, but I do know that uh, I've been going down the rabbit hole a little bit and like just thinking about, okay, well, if I was a head coach, what system would I run? Or what, yeah. what, how would I run a practice? Like mm-hmm. I'm just starting to kind of formulate in my mind, um, put together some things. And it's really kind of hard because, you know, there's a lot of different systems out there. A there's lot. a lot. And you want to have a, you know, you yeah. want to have a system and you want it to be successful. So, I mean, the guy like Jeff, you know, he happened to choose a triangle because as a player, that's what was successful that's what he for him. Successfully won many he, championships. He was an yeah. assistant under Tim. Yeah. yeah. So that's what he happened to pick. Was it most popular with his team he had? Didn't really sound like it. Um, was it the right personnel? I don't know. Yeah. But it's got to, you know, those, those type of decisions are kind of tough. It is. It is. And then at the end of the day, I mean, um, you know, Coach Jeff, he, he also always said this, like, uh, you know, if I want it to be on me. Like, I want it to be my decision. If, it, if, it, if, if it's going to come back to anybody, it's going to come back to me and I can live with it. You know, but I wanted to do it the way I want to do it. And so he was firm on how he wanted to do Which things. Which makes sense. And yeah. he was firm on wanting to run the triangle and, you know, if, and everybody has to buy into the system. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm interested now because Jeff, you know, he, he left that. I, I, I've known Jeff for a long time. He's a good friend of mine. Um, I've never played for him. I wasn't around when, when he was the head coach. But I wonder, like, that experience for him. And now that he's been a few years and an assistant at Alaska, if he was getting to get an opportunity to be a head coach again somewhere, I wonder, I, you know, I'm sure he's learned a lot. So yeah. uh, hopefully I'd like to see him get a crack at um, another opportunity somewhere. That'd yeah, be, that'd sure. be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you mentioned another coach I wanted to ask you about, Coach Torman. Yeah. Is it Toroman or Torman? Right, though? Toroman. Yeah, it's spelled Toroman. T-O- you got to roll the Toro, tongue on the R? Toro, man. Okay. Yeah. What did you think? It, how, how did you like him? Um, to be honest, I liked him a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because the three positions that flourish most out of the, in, in that system is um, the point guard, the four. Actually, it's pretty much the point guard and the four. Because yeah. he likes, you know, shooting, like, options, and, and everyone says that he's a, it, it's a tough, tough practices and all that. But I was there when I was young, so yeah. I loved being in shape anyway. And so he he, um, he was very strict on the practices, very, like, limited water breaks and, and but, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, but what, with his system, though, he was, he was tremendous. With, if he has this, that, the, the correct personnel for his system... Because it's kind of like um, he doesn't deter away from it. Like it's that. It, it, that that's what he's going to do. Yeah. And he's going to do it to the best that he can teach it. You know. And so um, I actually played some of my best basketball under him. Yeah. The thing I heard a variety of of different things for from people that played for him. I definitely think that if I was younger or in the prime of my career, I would have loved playing for him. I think as I got older, I probably would have hated it. Cause, yeah, that's what I mean. A lot of because uh, I know that he really preaches like pace of you know you're going five on zeros, game speed. If he's going, yeah. that's what I heard. Yes, it is. It is. And it seemed like, correct me if I'm wrong, like we played against um, his uh, his teams. I know being one of his national teams. Yeah, it seemed to me like his system, this is going to sound really, but it was a ton of horns, I remember, just options off of horns, is that yeah. right? Or, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of horns, there's a lot of horns, and the point, there's a lot of running for the point guard, <laughs> a lot of handoffs, a lot of pick and rolls, um, but he always, but he it puts, if you run it right in that pace, it puts the defense in a bad position, because yeah. it, it is hard to guard, and you always have an open shot, Yeah, you always have an open shot, so, I mean, to each its own, but like, um, to back up what you were saying, yeah, like some some of the older guys on our team wasn't really feeling it too much. <laughs> wasn't feeling the vibe. 
Who are some of the older guys on the team? I'm just joking. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not going to mention any names. Speaking, <laughs> not mention any names. Uh, speaking of your teammates, uh, some of your favorite teammates over the years. Yeah. Um, Joe DeVance. Uh, Is it teammate. DeVance or DeVance? I think I asked him. He was on the show. On JD, uh, JDV. 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 Okay. I can just say JDV. <laughs> Any He's honor, up there. honorable mentions? Yeah. <laughs> Any two or three more honorable mentions? Um, I mean, Danny, Danny Siegel, he helped me a lot. Um, he was one of my vets for most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, in Enebra, I had the old, I mean, I had the guys, you know, JJ, Mark, LA, they were all, uh, they were all really good to me. Um, they were very, I mean, it's not only for me, but when I see when I see teammates really go beyond and they don't really have to get praise or do it when the lights are on, yeah. but kind of like um, behind the scenes when they really do what's best to help a team, to help the team win, whether it's you know help help a guy off off the court or if he's down or maybe just go out to lunch with him and kind of kind of in all. All for the team success. All for the be- the betterment of the team. You know, that's that's what a good teammate is. Yeah. Not really. Of course, in the heat of the battle, some teammates can get mad and, 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 and yell at each other. But at the same time, it's like just to understand how each person, each individual works and handle each personality. Yeah. So, so James Yap was really good at that. Um, he wasn't, he didn't have to be too vocal. He wasn't a vocal guy. But as far as making sure the team is okay. Yeah. Um, Leading by example, I mean, I've I've I played a long career, so I mean, I I can I don't want to miss anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of guys to go in, but you know that that championship team, um, the the Alab team. You know, Jimmy wasn't my coach, but I mean, wasn't my teammate. But as a coach, I can see how everybody liked him as a teammate because he just goes far and beyond uh, what it takes. No matter no matter why he's had so much success, and his team's always winning. Because everybody who his teammate was has nothing but good things to say about him. Because yeah. it's not he doesn't do it for himself. He does it for you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a strong believer in you know you do good things to people and you do the right you do the things the right way. Good things happen to you, you know. And that's how he does, and that's how he implements his practices now and his team now. And so he's one of them, even though he was my teammate. Uh, a lot of my teammates that you know last year too. Yeah, in it for the I Love team. I mean. When you win, cha- you can't win championships, everybody. But like you said earlier, coach, when you, it's so hard to win a championship. So, um, it's the relationships you build through your career. I mean, you yeah. had like a 16, 17 year career, so you know that. But most importantly, also, is winning. You know, of course, you want to win as much. And so, when you have a championship team, it's kind of just more special. I mean, I've been on losing teams that are fun too. But, yeah, yeah. When you win a championship with a group of guys and, and, and experience that, just that surreal feeling, it's different. Yeah. It's different. So, like, when uh, the, the championships that have won, all those teammates have been, been tremendous to me. Awesome. Uh, now, you, you went, your first year in the ABL, you went to, you played for Singapore. Yeah. Right? How did that opportunity come about, and uh, what was your experience like there? Uh, well, at that time I was at Global Court. That was kind of when one of my last years in the PBA, and and um, uh, the general manager called me and was like, "Hey, I called your boss from uh, Global Port, excuse me, and I asked him if we can have your rights, if you can play with us. What what do you think about that?" And I was like, "Really?" And I was like, "You know." And then shortly after, my boss called me from Global Port and was like, "What do you think about this?" I didn't say anything. I just said that if they really want you, we could just we could work something out. And so um, that's how it went about. And then I chose it. I talked to my wife, my family, and I was like, you know, it's going to be different. I'm based here for so many years playing in the PBA, but now I'm going to be away from the family. I'm going to be doing some, but, you know, my wife was very supportive and was like, you know, yeah, just take it. Um, It was about maybe the latter part of the regular season and the playoffs, and that's what they said they wanted me for. And then um, it was different playing as kind of – Import because I was an import then. Yep. So you're playing. I'm playing as a local all the time, but it's not not as an import where every single game of mine is analyzed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and any wrong thing I do, I could get released. I could mm-hmm. any, anything happen. It's not, nothing's for set set in stone. 
Uh, luckily, I had a great season there. Um, we came back. We beat all of here <laughs> in the Philippines I to that. make it to the finals. We beat them in the semis. And then, um, man, we were one possession away to win the championship. Oh, man. You know how that goes. You, yeah. Like you said, it's so hard to win it. Every yeah. possession counts. Yeah. So, it was, I mean, it was a great experience. Hard to be away from family, but it was a great experience. And I want to hold that with me forever. You know? Awesome. So then, then after that experience, you're able to. That was that was two years ago, right? Then yeah. last year you were with Alab. Yeah. And that was uh, I follow that season really close just because uh, Jimmy is Jimmy's first head coaching job. Danny, Danny was on board. Those are two of my best friends. So mm-hmm. I watched a ton of the ton of the games and uh, man, that was that must have been a great feeling last year going through the the year last year and then pulling through at the end. Yeah, I mean it was. It was an incredible season, you know, and, and like like playing in Singapore was different, you know, coming back home and playing for the Philippines, like it, when you play with a flag on your chest, you know, other than the Gilas, it's like we're the only other team that represents yeah. the country. You yeah. Know? So when you have that, that flag on your chest, it's kind of like you have a big obligation, you know, and, and to represent yourself well um, and to go out there and just play with as much heart as you can and try to win, you know, because you have... You know, in the PBA, you have corporate, you have yeah. business, you know, corporate uh, behind you. But here, you actually have the whole country behind you, yeah. which is overwhelming, but at the same time, fun. That's um, one of the reasons I love the ABL and the, the travel, like the home and away. Like, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I noticed certainly I was at two of the games last year in the finals where there was so many, there was, you know, a ton of uh, flag waving oh, yeah. and... and uh, Everyone's very patriotic, yeah, 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 whether yeah. you're home or away. So that's what makes it fun, I think. It is. It is, definitely. Definitely. And the games are packed. Yeah. Know? And um, like you said, you get to travel. But, um, it, yeah, we, we started off with a lot of adversity, kind of different than now. So that, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, that's right. Like, that's right. Like, are you nervous? So we're 4-0 now, but last year we started 0-3. And then um, everybody was kind of like, you know, uh, worried and panicking. But at the same time, you know, Coach Jimmy... Um, kept his cool and stayed composed and always knew that we'd be there at the end if we did things the right way. So uh, we overcame adversity and, and won the championship. And it, it's just incredible, you know, at, at our, you know, at, towards the end of your career. And, and I don't know how long, like I told you, I just take day by day. I don't look too yeah. much in the future. Uh, I'm just trying to take care of my body. But, I mean, when you can win a championship, you know, oh, yeah, that's great, as man. you're getting older, it's, <laughs> man, hopefully we win another one. And then, yeah, playing in front of those big crowds, and you guys won it at home. I was, yeah, we won it at home. Was, yeah, I was at no the better game, than so. and the final game too. Yeah, it was that. Was, that was incredible. Um, shifting gears a little bit, but you you mentioned it, uh, taking care of your body. I because I'm at practice every day now. Like I I see I notice that you're there early a lot. A lot of the times you maybe may not be on the basketball court, but. You're, you're doing something else. We've had conversations about diet. Like, what are some of the tips that that have helped you preserve your body to still be in great shape and still be uh, an, a very effective player as a, I don't want to say as a, a non-rookie <laughs> guard? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Makes you feel better. Um, no, I mean, we both know as you get older, you know, you feel a lot of, aches and pains that you didn't even know you had, or that you didn't know was possible. So um, you really need to, you know, you got to treat your body as a temple, you know, and just uh, you have to watch what you eat. You know, I, I actually, I became, before the season, I became a vegetarian, a vegan. How many and months was that? It lasted for about three, yeah, three to four months. Mm-hmm. And I felt the big difference. Um you know, um, but you know, I shifted a little bit, but I still, I, I really watch what I eat. That's important. What you take in your body, super important. And then, like you said, um, you know, you, whatever you put in, you know, you get out of, so I, I really take pride in, you know, getting a pride. Like you said, I, I get to practice, you know, two, sometimes three hours before practice, but at the same time, Actually, I see you in there too, putting hey, in that work. Trying to, trying yeah, to, yeah, on the treadmill. Be a fat ass. I know that's my goal now. Just don't be a fat ass. 
You don't have to be fat, sexy. You don't want to be the fat coach. <laughs> no, I don't want to be the fat coach, man. That's it. That's my goal. Yeah. So that's why I get there. No, so I'm there early. You know, I'm whether it's on the bike, on the treadmill. You know, in the in the in the sauna, hot and cold, stretching. Um, you know, because th- those things you have to do those things in order to to stay the course and and, and be there at the end. You know, yeah. with our with how hectic our schedule is, especially starting now in January, we play nine games in 21 days, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it's a marathon. So I want to be there in the end and then, and you hold each other accountable. If I'm, if I, if people see me doing it, the vet, the captain, then they're going to see me and also do it. I'm not going to force them to do it, but if they see me doing it, they're going to earn that respect and they're going to do it as well. So. Yeah, that's a great example, man. And it's, we have such a young team that I think that that stuff goes a long way. Like they're still learning how to be a professional, and mm-hmm. they, while they may have been good in college um, or good throughout their career up to this point, it's also good to have a good example of hey, this guy's uh, you know accomplished some things. He's still doing it, and he's yeah. doing a lot of the, he's doing these extra things still. Uh, probably when I mean. You have to, but you kind of don't have to. You know, you're doing it because you want to do it. No one's telling you to do it. Yeah, so definitely. that's a, definitely a great example for for uh, our young team. I think. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, and then, yeah, I went on a rant too uh, in, in my last uh, episode about just diet because I think that I really think that that's like one of the last pillars. Like, I, I think strength and conditioning has improved so much since I've been in the country, mm-hmm. but the the diet is one of the last like pillars to fall to where people can kind of finally will at some point realize that, you know, how important it is because the way I look at it is your main, your number one fuel source as just a functioning human being is what you eat. Exactly. (laughs) There are other things like there are, you know, the air you breathe and there, there are certain other things, but, but you can dramatically, enhance your performance by just not eating eating, healthy yeah eating healthy not eating crap if if you're eating crap all the time guess what you're probably gonna feel like yeah and if that's your norm dude dude he's like yeah yeah yeah. just by adjusting that and that doesn't take any it takes discipline but it doesn't take effort extra effort physical effort exactly exactly most definitely most definitely and it's i mean it may cost a little more but hey (laughs) Your body's the b- biggest investment that you can make. I mean, it's the best investment. Yeah, yeah. You're investing in you're yourself. Investing in yourself. In your health. You in know? your health. So yeah, definitely. The little bit extra you pay now is, is you're going to just, it's going to be worth it's it. Gonna, yeah, definitely. You definitely. think about all the yeah. money you spend on stupid yeah, 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 shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but it, and it's natural, though. Like, when you're young, you don't think about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's why when you're older, you have to kind of teach the young guys so they know to start now. Yeah. Start now, and so you want to be the best that you could be in your craft, right? So that's part of it. That's a big part of it. Exactly. Yeah, you got to have that that motivation. Um, we're, well, we're coming close to the end of the show, and I wanted to I ask two closing questions to every one of my guests that I've had on, and I'm going to ask the same same to you. So, okay. um, ten years. If you could go back in time, ten years. For 60 seconds and give yourself a piece of advice that could help you, that would have helped you in the last 10 years, what would that piece of advice be? You follow that? It's kind of yeah, like... Yeah. No, I understand it. All right. Um, <laughs> stay humble. Um, stay humble and uh, stay true to yourself. I mean, with the heat of the battle, sometimes you get out of character. Sometimes things yeah. happen. So, I mean, for the most part, I built great relationships, you know, but sometimes, you know, I let the, my emotion take over, you know, um, and that goes with age and, and maturity. When I was younger, I was able to, I wasn't able to channel it, but as I got older than I did, I mean, a lot, of, I bet you, I think a lot of players can relate to that, uh, but that's one I can, I could think of is to kind of just, um, channel my emotions in a pos- in a more positive way because um, a lot of the young players get caught up in oh, like frustration and saying yeah. things that they shouldn't or acting like they shouldn't but some that could be misperceived and you don't want sure. you don't want things to be misperceived at all in because you're representing yourself 
in this in this profession. Yeah. And whatever names on your back on your back. So um, you want people to know that you were raised well. You know that you came from the right family. You know, like yeah, uh, um, that you're here for the right reasons and and you know you're, you're doing it uh, the right way. You know? That's a that's a great piece of advice and you know. I think anybody can, I know I can look back at some of the things that I did when I was younger and just be like, man, I'm like, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> How big of an idiot were you? Yeah. But, but that is, that's a great piece of advice, man, because, um, it doesn't take much, man, for somebody to change their opinion of you. You know, yeah. they might think you're a great guy and then they catch you 10 seconds doing something or saying something, or acting a different or way, or maybe that's the only time they get to see it. Only time. And then they think, oh, that guy's a jerk, or yeah. whatever. So, and you don't know what eyes are doing that. In front yeah, of who knows who's and you, watching. what kids are watching, you know, yeah. all that stuff. So, great, great piece of advice. Flip side of that, second part of that question is, 10 years from now, where do you want to be? Where do I want to be? What do you want to be doing? I want to be... Well, healthy enough to be able to run and play with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> How old are your kids? My kids are six and three. So, okay. I mean, they're going to be teenagers, but still, like, I'll be, you know, in good shape enough to to kind of play sports with them, you know, or, or do whatever they they love to do. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very family-oriented guy. I'm a, you have two kids as well. Yeah, and, and, about the same age. Too, yeah, about so. the same age, so... That's one, uh, you know, and, and 10 years from now, I don't know. I just want to, I, I can't tell you that I want to still be in the game. Like you said, you don't know if you're, you're coaching now and you love what you're doing, but you don't know. <laughs> so, okay. Edit. Yeah, no um, yeah. So you don't know what, um, is going to happen in the future, but all I can say is, you know, I just want to be uh, doing what I love to do, whatever it may be. Um, supporting my family and being there for my family and and um, whether it's here or back in the U.S. or whether it's basketball or in a business field. Um, I just want to be, you know, we're an adventurous family. I want to be traveling with my family and, and, and doing uh, stuff like that with them and that nature and uh, just doing what I love to do. Whether it's not making as much money as I plan. I mean, I, I'm a guy that... Um, of course, money's essential when you have a family yep. and you're a supporter of a family, but I'd rather make less money and do what I love to do and enjoy yeah. it and, you know, have that schedule where I can spend more time with my family rather than making a, a lot more money, but then not, not happy with my life Yeah, and dreading going to work. Here you go. Well, uh, thanks and, and, and good luck. Good luck. Hopefully, uh, 10 years from now, you'll have see you and you'll have a big, yeah. big ass smile on your face. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, I podcast. appreciate it. Um, anything, are you on Instagram, Twitter? You want to plug yeah. that? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Um, everyone tuning in, please follow me at, uh, Jurb2, J-U-R-B2, um, on Instagram and that's on Twitter, the same name on Twitter as well. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an honor to be here. Same well, thanks, man. And, and before you go, I just want to say, you know, I, we have a super busy schedule, so thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah. And I also want to say, you know, I think you've been, throughout your career, you've been a real inspiration to aspiring athletes. You've overcome a ton of adversity. We know that you're not the biggest, tallest guy. Um, you may not be the most athletic guy. You were undrafted. You've been traded a few times, but you persevered through that, and um, I think you're a better player in person all because of it. So I, w I definitely wanted to say that before you get out of here, and thank you so much for doing this. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, before we go, um, I want to plug a couple of things. My Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash emang30. Go there. Like the page. I have a community of over 34,000 people there. So there you can stay up to date on the vlog, my appearances, and this podcast. My YouTube channel, youtube.com slash themank30. That's where you're going to find all my podcast videos, all my vlogs. I'm doing a ton of travel vlogs this year because we're traveling uh, with Alab. So I, I'm going to get a lot of behind-the-scenes action on our season right there on the YouTube channel. And, of course, you can follow this podcast on Twitter, at Stain Major on Twitter. My handle is at emank30 on both Instagram and Twitter. So a lot of information there, but um, that's where you can find the majority of 
uh, information regarding the vlog, regarding this team, regarding the podcast. So I'm trying to step it up this year and do even more podcasts than I did last year. And this is just the beginning. So stay tuned. Um, also, two more things. Merch. EricMank.com slash shop. There you can find t-shirts and my book, which is also on Amazon, uh, covering uh, my high school days and kind of the formation of what I was end up being as a basketball player and a person. It's called Orioles. You can get it on my website or on Amazon. So check that all out. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll be back very, very soon, hopefully later this week. Until then, I am Eric Mink, and this has been Stain Major. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face right here. Don't forget to check out the important links in the description below, and for more Stain Major, click on the video over there. We'll see you next time.